Hi guys, uh, my name is Anuj Jindal. I welcome you to this session with Mr. Naveen Kumar Singh, who has cleared RBI Examination 2019, the result of which has been declared recently. So uh, let me provide you a very brief background about uh, Naveen, and then uh, he will be telling you something very unique, something very important that will help you make the required changes in your prep if you are a serious aspirant for RBI. So Naveen uh, ha has been working. Uh, in a nationalized bank for the last seven years. So it's been a long experience in the banking industry for him. He started giving RBI examination in 2014. That was his first attempt. And in that attempt, he reached the interview stage and uh, lost the final cutoff by seven marks. Okay. After that, he must have been very hopeful and he started giving the exam again, 2015 onwards. And for the last four attempts, he was not able to clear mains. Okay, despite all his efforts, probably something was going wrong in his way and he was not able to clear mains. In 2019, he made some big changes about which we are going to talk very uh, shortly. And because of those changes, because of those tweaks in his preparation method, he made it to the interview again in his last attempt. It was his sixth attempt and it was in this attempt that, that he's got through the examination. Okay, so identifying and after identifying and understanding the changes that he has made, there are two major learnings that I have been able to identify through Naveen that, okay, these are the major changes that he made in his preparation. These are the major learnings that we can get from his experience. And he's going to talk about those learnings after which we'll talk about phase one, phase two and interview preparation separately. Naveen. Uh, hi, sir. Hello. Um, so, um, hello to all. Um, first of all, I'll just talk about the changes of the preparation that I made in the 2019 attempt. Uh, the first major change that I made was not going after each and every question in the examination. Since I have a vast experience in this examination, I've given all the number of attempts before. Uh, I decided that the side time that I realized that uh, there are going to be questions that I will not be able to attempt, that I will not be able to solve. And in order to cover the syllabus that goes beyond, you know, behind those questions, uh, I need to put in a lot of extra efforts so which will not have a proper, what, what can I say, a return ratio. Hmm. So I concised my preparation over to those questions which were, which as you can see from the past year's paper that are available on our research site, that hmm. are the key focus areas that keep on repeatedly coming. I'll just name like government schemes and the old ones the reports, indexes, these are the things that they keep on coming again and again. And I focused on those mm -hmm. because it's important to maximize not only the number of attempts, but to mm -hmm. maximize the number of correct questions that you attempt in the examination. Mm -hmm. Phase two, as you all know, is a defining moment. And mm -hmm. that was where I was continuously failing. Mm -hmm. um, secondly, uh, I would like to again say that um, my objective of appearing in RBI grade B is to actually become RBI grade B. Uh, it does not encapsulate uh, trying to do a lot of things that are not necessary in order to crack this examination. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of people make this mistake of trying to study so much that uh, it becomes hard, very hard to retain when mm -hmm. the moment of examination arrives. So mm -hmm. I just you know, kept it down very simple, mm -hmm. very straightforward. Uh, all the material that you want is available out there with sir subscription or otherwise also hmm. keep yourself focused to one or two sources that you have identified to be fruitful and just stick to those uh, hmm. it does involve a certain amount of risk but hmm. once you do the examination stage you'll realize that this risk is actually worth taking because hmm. uh, otherwise if you try and diversify your sources too much you'll hmm. end up not retaining even those things that you might otherwise have retained hmm. Hmm. So Naveen, what you were telling me is that we have a lot of habits, we are used to, we are habituated to this sort of thing, where we have 1GB, 2GB data, we have to do a lot of data, a lot of people talk about this over and over again, but we don't have to read 100 MB, that's because yeah. we are running after all the sources, so in short, yeah. you have sources identified and you stuck to those sources and yeah. you stopped running after all the areas that might yes. be asked in the examination, right? Yes. So that's, that's the biggest, right. yeah, that's the biggest learning for everyone who's watching this. I believe if you uh, use these two learnings, uh, you know, by spirit, 
then you will be able to clear your examination much more easily than otherwise so let me now come to phase 1 phase 2 preparation strategy kya kya sources use kiye because that will of course ease out the pressure on others ki kya kya sources use karne chahiye and at the same time uh, kya kya changes kiye in your preparation what changes did you make in your preparation which made sure in all these three phases phase 1 phase 2 interview ki aap uh, you're not going into that black hole through which you cannot come back so let's start with yeah. phase 1 what were the changes you made and what are the sources you used so uh, in phase 1 uh, first of all i've been giving phase 1 uh, since last six times and i've cleared it all the times in you know in every attempt hmm. and uh, uh, a key note that i would like to make over here is uh, rbi has a habit of surprising you and it can do that in any one every phase hmm. so what we need to be aware of is that there are a lot of other aspirants who give this examination other than you and those people who are strictly preparing for upsc or rbi there are a lot of ibps aspirants good aspirants who are very strong in economic uh, in your uh, quant reasoning and english hmm. and what happens is if rbi uh, you know furnishes a very simple kind of a paper then these guys are actually going to knock you out of the competition no matter whether they are prepared for the phase 2 or not i'm not saying they're bad they're absolutely hmm. good but hmm. that's what is going to happen hmm. so this is what happened in 2019 also this was the easiest paper in last 6 years hmm. and uh, uh, many people who struggled with quant and reasoning could easily attempt like 10 or 15 questions out of 30 and 35 40 questions out of 60 in the, both the sections respectively so hmm. you need to give it a due amount of importance don't take it very easy uh, don't hmm. be complacent that you can do phase 1 yaar ye to bahut aasani se ho jata hai main 10 din 15 hmm. din mein nikal lunga that's not hmm. how it works Hmm. Secondly, you have to identify your strength. For me, like English is my strength, so hmm. that gives me an advantage, so that hmm. I can be a bit relaxed in the other sections. Hmm. But your strength is some other section, and that section comes out to be very hard on hmm. that particular. We need to be equally prepared about the others as well, because there is sectional hmm. cutoff and sectional cutoff, and it is being driven up by the aspirants hmm. over the years. In the number of applications in RBI increasing day by day, and so. Hmm. the competition is only going to get tough hmm. uh considering this year's aspirants for 2021s hmm. uh, since your preparation has already gone over a long time the exam hmm. was i did go in july and june uh you need to focus on the fact that the exam is now being held in 2021 so hmm. you need to maybe prepare a bit extra because your current affairs definition has undergone a slight change Hmm. uh i talked very uh, soon about my uh, sources so for hmm. ga uh, i'll say that spotlight and bankers adda are enough the capsules hmm. of spotlight and bankers adda are totally sufficient hmm. uh and prepare your own notes from this this will hmm. help you in phase 2 as well do hmm. not go anywhere beyond this it's hmm. not going necessary if the questions are actually asked beyond this it's going to be difficult for everybody So hmm. trust me on this. I've given this a lot of time. These two sources are more than sufficient hmm. for quant reasoning English. All you need is practice. There are n number of sources available. Anurag also has its own materials. Hmm. Hmm. Prefer those books and practice, practice, practice. If you are weak at it, if you are hmm. not good at, it, even then you should go for a practice. Hmm. Do not attempt examination having given at least five mock tests. Hmm. Otherwise, you're going to actually not be in a state to give the examination. It's a high pressure situation. Hmm. people prepare for it for years and then they lose out on phase 1 then they lose their heart as well so hmm. please take care of hmm so uh, you were talk- telling me about the mistakes that you made in phase 1 this year uh, i think it's very important that we highlight that jisse ki students yeah. wo mistake na kare yeah so in this year's phase 1 i cleared the phase 1 cutoff by 0.75 marks hmm. uh, which is actually like one question away from complete disqualification Hmm. So the reason that this happened was because I got complacent and casual that mera to har baar phase one nikal jata hai so I, let's be like I prepare it in last 15 days and give it hmm. but that almost literally costed me my last attempt hmm. uh, and uh, then since uh, my result is that I have been selected you can understand hmm. the uh, impact it would have had so hmm. do not make that mistake be ready for phase one give it ample hmm. time you all know hmm. your own strengths and weaknesses so do hmm. focus on it. with hmm. adequate amount of time and energy hmm very very important because y- you need not focus a lot on phase 1 but at the same time not focus too less on it as well right yes yes, yes. Hmm. uh let's move on to phase 2 uh, let's talk about fm and then esi and then english 
तो एफ एम में वॉट वर द बेसिक सोर्स इज यू यूज एंड हाउ डिड यू चेंज योर प्रेप फ्रॉम द प्रीवियस ईयर्स so uh, finance and management i took uh, uh, you know guidance from one of my friends who is currently in rbi and uh, as per what he told me this that finance and management has a lot of static portion mm. uh, so he advised me that before even phase 1 commences or the notifications out you should actually be done with the static portion mm. uh, all the maths all the theories and stuff you should actually be ready with it so mm. that uh, you can completely focus on the current affairs at, uh, mm. when the exam notification comes So my sources were like, uh, as a textbook i refer ramesh singh um, mm. i find it, i've been using it for a long time and i find mm. it very you know uh, a good book uh, mm. for both price section and the uh, finance section mm. secondly for management i referred the pc tripathi uh, mm. textbook mm. and uh, that i was enrolled uh, with edutap earlier i had mm. their material so i got the finance and management from their material mm. this year's 2018 paper was uh complete surprise package uh, they totally you know uh, like only a few questions were asked from these sources that i have mentioned hmm. uh specific in management otherwise hmm. it was more of a reading comprehension based uh thing where you hmm. could find the answer in the question itself hmm. uh this is both good and bad news uh, because hmm. it takes away the edge that you were preparation might have hmm. uh how Does give you a chance to you know if you can use your mind properly at that particular moment it gives you mm. a chance to maximize those. Mm. Uh, another point that I would like to make over here is that in finance and management over the years I have seen that uh, RBI is becoming more and more uh, rather in management it is becoming more and more unconventional. Uh, mm. Earlier theory, simple theories and the postulates and what are the basics that was being asked, mm. but now they are completely you know changing the way that they ask these questions. Hmm. so you need to be prepared to be surprised hmm. and uh, you can expand your sources a bit but don't go too much into it it has already been written that the questions will be basic in nature hmm. so they will not want to be like going very hard go on all these things hmm. so keep it with about you and uh, that's all that's uh, necessary for for uh, numericals also uh, hmm. since i was enrolled with edutap i used their own numericals material however the weightage of numericals is absolutely insignificant hmm. right now hmm. so i don't expect to come next year also but i can't say anything for certain hmm what about current affairs how important is current affairs because weightage to 30 hai that we know 22 25 to 30 uh but a lot of people tend to ignore that no Or, no it's completely like a fatal mistake to ignore this because you have to understand that you're not only preparing for phase 2 then interviews is coming as well and hmm. the finance current affairs are often comprised of a lot of new initiatives by rbi itself hmm. and they will studying them will be very helpful for the interview as well uh, hmm. for the current finance uh, uh, i got the study material from anvit sir hmm. I, although i was enrolled in his uh, esi section uh, esi in phase 1 he hmm. uh, provided us with uh, for four months of finance current affairs hmm. and i found them to be highly relevant uh, this hmm. is on record highly relevant there were questions that were directly asked from the phase material of that was available hmm. plus uh, when you are in the phase 2 situation you have 20 days 25 days of hmm. for preparing you don't want to go on for random sources and again studying everything after having you know, given phase 1 so hmm. these concise pdfs you know they are very very helpful in you know directing your study towards what you need to study at that particular moment So uh, I highly recommend the material that an officer uh, current affairs has been provided at that particular point of time. Hmm. Let's move to ESI now. ESI way it's completely opposite. Seventy marks, around seventy marks of current affairs and thirty marks of static portion, and the same problem again. A lot of students ignore static portion. Yeah, yeah. ESI uh, for me has been a thorn in the flesh, uh, hmm. uh, mostly because of the unpredictable nature of this paper. uh you can see that over the years esi is like completely uh, the last few something that you have never even thought of hmm. it started off the uh, you know the movement in which led to rti there was a question based on uh, the origin yes. of right in the act yes. so it was the first time when anything like that was asked now okay. if you are going to go after these kind of things hmm. uh, you have to understand that it's very easy to lose your you know focus in preparation Hmm. uh although it's an important thing anybody who knows that probably the upsc aspirants already know that so hmm. they will be 
to answer this question but for a person who is non upsc background if he mm. goes after like the origins of each and every act and the cases and stuff like that he's going to actually lose his way so mm. again psi this year as i've already mentioned i try to keep myself down to what is being asked and how much i can cover out of those mm. uh, i i'll directly go to my sources this is substantial what i'm saying already mm. um a uh, part of the knowledge comes from the amazing as i've already said uh, mm. i was a good student of anurag sir in uh, mm. the esi set i mm. found this material quite sufficient and mm. uh, along with that the monthly updates so even if you are studying something uh, suppose there is a cast uh, cast sensors or something like that then anurag sir's update comes in february or january then you can already you know add to the information that you already have so mm. if you keep the static and dynamic portion separate and study them you know thoroughly i think that material is more or less sufficient hmm. uh, i also referred the vision is capsules for 6 months hmm. i found them to be helpful hmm. uh, i probably a lot of students also do that hmm. and then i'd like to refer a textbook by ram ahuja which is hmm. uh, on social or social issues hmm. so uh, this book will be very helpful in the old schemes that are asked in the examination because hmm. uh, subject wise or uh, like uh, whatever issue wise uh, chapters are divided so poverty illiteracy and all the stuff and all the schemes or initiatives of the government that are made to eradicate or to you know reduce the problems they mm. have been mentioned in a chronological order in this book so mm. this will be a great help uh, in uh, you know uh, reducing the time that people spend in searching for schemes mm. uh talk about government schemes i restricted myself to uh two years of government schemes that were in running mm. uh we can always have make exceptions for the very popular ones like janan mm. yojana and these things which are actually very massive in size and scope so mm. you can all but you have to understand that uh, nothing is permanent like this year ayushman bharat scheme was launched and people were expecting it to be a big thing right. it was one of the world's biggest healthcare programs so we were expecting questions on it but it did not come mm. so you have to be ready to be surprised as i've already said Uh, but uh, um, this is what I restricted myself to: two years of government schemes, like 2017 mm. onwards to 20. The material is available on the search site; it's mm. there with the same time. Mm. And uh, uh, then the uh, old schemes from Ramamuja. Mm. So, uh, as an additive measure, I do not actually recommend this. But I do. Uh, I did go through the websites of IMF, World Bank, and United Nations in mm. order to just familiarize me with the nature of reports that they publish. Mm-hmm. So uh, in 2018 there was a complete four question passage that was asked on an uh, IMF report so mm-hmm. anybody who had even just clicked on the home page would have cracked out those four questions without any problems at all mm-hmm. so i do that but i don't say that people should do it they should only do it once they have the time and the luxury to actually go through that Hmm. One main learning that I can figure out, जो तुमने जो तुमने बोला है, but I don't know if the students have understood it or taken it out or not. कि phase one की exam से पहले या फिर उससे एक महीना डेढ़ महीना पहले ही your preparation of phase two when it comes to the syllabus part should be over at least yes. once. Otherwise, yes. after prelims, you are going to be stuck in the syllabus again. Yes, yes, that's very true. Because phase one in itself, you have to understand. You have to learn a lot. You mm. have to learn about uh, military exercises, books, and authors, and obituaries, achievements, and all those stuff. So you have to unlearn them mm. very quickly. Then focus on the things that are going to be asked. And phase two questions are not going to be very direct in nature. Mm. Like this year, they asked about some index. So mm. they're going to go inside the index. They're going to go to the sub tables, and inside the sub table, they're going to ask a fact. you may mm. or may not remember them but if you're not having ample time to on your hands to mm. study all these things, you're not able to you will not be able to actually crack them hmm and one other major change that i have seen is the way you have compiled and aggregated all your sources and made sure ki wo phaile na hindi mein bolte hai raita phail jata hai actually i have seen a lot of students and even myself when i am teaching when i am trying to use some of the other sources to create some kind of compilation ki ek bar phail gaya to phail gaya then it's very difficult to you know organize it so yeah. jo sources the sources that you're telling of course majority of them are very standardized to wo at least use kar sakte hain students unke sath they can add some of the other things right yes english mein uh, your performance has been good 
uh, majority of the times and there is a very direct reason for that so let's hear it from you what exactly do you do in english okay so english may uh, as i already uh, you know discussed this with anush sir uh, it's a very small story i'll tell it very short very shortly mm-hmm. that in 2018 uh, i got uh, like nee in 2017 i got 84 marks i guess the mm-hmm. all india highest was 85 or 87 Hmm. and uh, very next attempt i got 69 marks and and hmm. the, in my that in that attempt i missed the cut off by 0.75 marks hmm. now if you take difference of 15 marks that has come if hmm. i add this up i had a very good chance to actually qualify it in uh, the rbi grade win 2018 hmm. so people try to you know uh, treat english as a king maker it's not a king maker it's a subject in its own way you hmm. have to treat it like that and mm-hmm. if you uh, put an ample amount of effort like this time i, I completely decided ki mere ko is english pe dhyan dena hi dena hai to i took out time i segregated my study ki mujhe teen din english ko dena hai and mm-hmm. in these three days i tried 25 i wrote 25 pages and 10 essays an mm-hmm. essays on the topics that i uh, you know uh, that are provided by you also that i found mm-hmm. relevant to, uh, that were in the news so mm-hmm. i put those essays and mm-hmm. uh, I marks are not out, but possibly I got a benefit of uh, practicing all those practicing. things because, mm. yeah, yeah, because uh, English in itself is a you know it's a hundred mark subject, and mm. if it, uh, the person who is checking this paper has even five or ten people who are writing writing very good stuff, then mm. even your question or your answers come in their front in mm. front of them rather. Mm. So they, if they're not best, they're not going to give you marks. Hmm. and each and every single marks count a lot as hmm. the marks totally reveal hmm one more thing that i have noticed this year is uh, with respect to the nabard paper so the english uh, essays were very unconventional this time something yeah. which is normally followed in upsc and not in rbi nabard or sebi so hmm. uh, and and what specialization what what difference it is making is it is focused more on your writing skills which comes with practice rather than your yes. ability to just mug up 10 15 essays right yes yes so yahan par writing is going to become all the more important in the exam ki exa- thoda philosophical essay aa gaya you just have to write it because there is no other option so aapki writing mm-hmm. skill achhi nahi hogi to nahi hoga kuch bhi right theek hai make sense make sense uh, uh, let's talk very briefly about the interview because uh, your interview was on the expected lines but there were some changes that probably you made before the final interview that helped you um so i had a, the uh, opportunity of having a mock interview with anut sir hmm. and uh, he um, pointed out some uh, things that i should have improved that i should improve and i did work on this uh, as he had correctly predicted i have been working in a nationalized bank for 7 years so he said your interview will be all about your profession and that that is generally the case with all the other people who are giving my interview on that particular day they mm. don't actually dive into too much it's mm. it's no fun for them to have a person sit and talk about something they doesn't you know know or is not comfortable with mm. so they, they were um, other than the panel had almost everybody talked to me about my profession the mm. questions were directly with that on that and since i had been forewarned or something like that so i was i made all possible efforts to be Uh, mm-hmm. completely up to date with what is the latest development in my bank what is the development that rbi has made with respect to general banking sector mm-hmm. and how it is does affect me and what is my bank doing in order to implement all those things mm-hmm. so uh, that helped me a lot uh, the questions were directly on those lines they were obviously going to be some surprise packages that they're going to throw at you but mm-hmm. once you get into the team of things you know you are you feel you are in command you can easily handle all those things mm-hmm. so uh, preparing for your interview with anticipation of what is being asked specifically if you are a working professional is always going to help you a lot over there hmm did you did you actually write down any of the questions and answers as a part of your preparation because some other students who have cleared actually did that uh, you know as I, Yeah, I actually did uh, uh, this thing. I had to do it because I said that uh, RBI is actually directly the regulator of banks, and I'm working in a bank. So what mm. I did is that whatever new initiatives my bank was you know, putting up, mm. I wrote all of them down. I did that for about two or three months mm. because uh, uh, RBI panelist can ask you anything. So mm. they, and he may be working in one or the other departments that has mm. actually done. or initiated that kind of a change 
So he's actually uh, entitled to ask you anything in that matter. So I did make notes. I did uh, a lot of, um, uh, you know, with respect to the updates specifically, I did a lot of note making. Uh, hmm. So that I'll be ready with the answers because you cannot hope to remember, sit and recall over there. You need hmm. to be on your toes. I know this is all the same. Nice, amazing. Uh, Naveen, uh, I think it's been, uh, you know, an honor and I think uh, because of the changes that you've made in your preparation, that is the only reason that you're here sitting not as an aspirant anymore, but as a selected candidate. So before finishing with the interview, let's, uh, you know, summarize and say it again, uh, the changes that you made because if students are watching this interview, that means they find it relevant that your first attempt may be selection ho sakta hai, or last attempt may be ho sakta hai. It all depends upon the strategy that you follow, the clarity that you have in your mind with respect to the exam. So, sources, ek to identify karke, stick to those sources, making sure that yeah. those sources are good. And secondly, not to try and run after every area. Uh, yeah. ki cover karlu, cover karlu. Identify that these major areas, hai. if I'm done with them, at least I'll get through in the examination. Right? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Anything else that you would like to tell the students before we finish? Oh, it's just a kind of a general message. Um, I am right now signing off as an aspirant of All India Competitive Examinations. My age is over. And uh, if anybody is watching this video, is probably in the race. So I did it in my last attempt. I could have done it before. It doesn't matter. The thing that matters is that if you are watching this, you're probably in the race. And would I just like you to, you know, chase your dream and possibly make it. Uh, smart study is going to help you. And no matter where you go, stick to your sources. Identify your strengths and weaknesses and I'm sure you're going to do well. That's it. Thank you. Beautifully said. All the very best. Take care. Thank you. Have a nice day.